Hey, what's up? Jimmy Brown from Guitar World here. Some of you may recall that eight years ago, I presented my own rock band arrangement of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, specifically the first movement, the Adagio section. It's that slow, hauntingly beautiful piano piece, and I arranged it for like a mid-70s British prog rock style arrangement for two guitars, one playing slow arpeggios, and the other one playing the lead, the melody, but like a whale and David Gilmore style with lots of bends and vibratos. That was chiefly inspired by his playing on Shiny New Crazy Diamond, as well as Time and Money. And uh, this appeared in the holiday 2015 issue and January, February, March 2016 issues. I presented it in my string theory columns as four monthly installments, and I did four short videos for it. I now present the whole thing, a new and improved version, which I came up with, which I play it in the key of E minor, tuned down one and a half steps, the C sharp standard. So that puts you in the original key of C sharp minor. It's actually, it's just a better way to play it. I mean, the original version was cool, but there were a couple of chord changes where it had a big stretch or you had to, you had to stick the landing with the pinky. And it's one of those things where, you know, how many times you practice it, half the time you, you nail it, half the time you fudge it. So this new and improved arrangement is in the guitar friendly key of E minor. It's actually kind of like metallic as nothing else matters, but I do the Tony Iommi approved down a minor third tuning, the C-sharp standard. Now this appears in the October 2023 issue of Guitar World, the full transcription. And what I'm gonna do now is play both parts and we'll do a split screen. I'll have the guitar one enter with the arpeggios and then the guitar two does the bends and they'll give you some helpful pointers. Here we go.
So for this guitar one part playing the slow triplet arpeggios, I'm using a slightly dirty tone, bridge humbucker pickup, and uh, lots of reverb because I want to create the effect of the piano sustain pedal. Because um, you want to have the notes ring together as much as possible, like you're playing a chord shape and you're arpeggiating it, but there are a few spots where you have to let go and you have to travel up the neck. So the reverb kind of covers your tracks and gives you a little more hang time as it were. And I'm employing hybrid picking, mostly downstrokes to pick, but whenever there's a pinch, two notes plucked at the same time, I'm using my middle finger with the pick and then when I'm doing some of the arpeggios, I'm doing down, down, pluck, down, down, pluck. So let's take a look at this, a few spots here in particular. So we start out with this E minor shape. E minor of a D, bar two. Okay, so whenever, like I said, whenever I have a, two notes together, I do a pinch, and then down, pluck, down, down, pluck, and that's the same pattern for all of them, you know, same with the C and the F over A. And there's one little stretchy shape here in bar six. That's a B7 over a D sharp. First thing I'm gonna do is get these fingers down because they get plucked together, and then get that pinky down, the seventh fret and the B string. So you're going from the E minor. See so what I did, I, and then get that down. It's a little easier than trying to form the entire chord all at once. Then we get to bar 12. This is an interesting thing. I'm playing E flat. And then E diminished over D. C sharp diminished seventh. I could have played threaded the D note, but I wanted to take advantage of the open string there. So we're going. Instead of going. Fretting that D at the fifth fret. It kind of punches nicer. Bar 16, when it goes to G minor over D, you want to keep that finger. Anything you can do to increase the hang time and a sustain, you know, the concept is to be like a sustain pedal on the piano. A little bit of a stretch here in bar 19, we go from D. B to minus seventh. Yeah, that's a little bit of a tough one. Because you gotta plop the pinky down. The pinky's always tricky to stick the landing on, right? So you kind of memorize it, you anticipate. So any parts like that, just go over, repeat, loop the measure several times as needed. In bar 24, we have this shape again. It was a B7 over D sharp, but now it's E7 over G sharp. Going to A minor. It's a little easier because the frets are closer together up here, right? Another tricky, slightly tricky fingering is in bar 26. We go from A minor over E. That's probably the hardest one right there. Yeah, bar 26. You're sticking the pinky down at 11th fret, ring finger 11th fret, and then 10, and then reaching back to seven. So then in bar 27, we have E minor at the 12th fret. You might want to just make the full E minor bar chord shape. And then A diminished, A diminished seventh. B7 flat nine. There's a flat nine. And then this is a section where the arpeggiation kind of becomes a melody. A little bit of a stretch there. And back to E minor over B.
I do want to hammer on there because it actually buys you a little bit more time, you know, when you're going from a, uh, you're going from. Also kind of adds a little bit of a color to it. It's like a grace note. In bar 32, we have a shift. This is probably the hardest part of the piece of this part. You're playing this B7 flat nine. You're doing these diminished seven arpeggios, so you got to shift when you go from the 10, 7, 13, 10, 11, and then E minor over B in bar 33. And then E diminished seven over B, that's bar 34. Another shift. You want to make sure you reach up to get that note, so that's bar 34 again. Notice I'm using the pick and the finger, and then you gotta jump back down, dude. Another shift. Then. Shift. And then you're past, that's really the hardest part. <laughs> and then we come down to this B7. And we add the flat nine, we just kind of collapse bar the index finger. And then second time F. Nice Beethoven. And then a regular C chord. A minor six. B. And then we're into the reprise of the main theme. And uh, it's mostly repetitive from that point on. We have this chord again from bar 48. Yeah, we're going from G. That's B7 over F sharp, sorry. G. Kind of like a bar chord, E minor. And then this one in bar 49. That's the stretchiest chord of the whole thing. But not too bad. And then. B7. And then it's mostly simple, compact triad shapes until we get to bar 60. We're playing E minor over B right before that. B7. And then this. That's an E minor, but we're playing the G way up here. These are Beethoven's notes, you know, I'm trying to cop the notes. Bar 62. I had to kind of borrow the pinky there. I had it at the 14th fret. I went. And then put it back at the 14th fret for that last note. And then this. You have to let go, obviously, and rely on That's why I added the bass part, just playing that B pedal tone. So it's really two guitars and bass. And then one more time on that. Important shift right there, you're going. And again, this is where tons of reverb really helps cover your tracks, right? <laughs> and then you just, you're home free from that point on E minor. E minor over B. And then low E minor, E5, E minor. Kind of like a Romanza, that classical piece. So as I stated earlier, my main inspiration for this guitar two part is David Gilmore's playing on Pink Floyd's Shiny New Crazy Diamond. Also his solos in Time and Money. Way on high string bends, mostly on the B string with a lot of vibrato. Gilmore uses a uh, sawed off whammy to get his vibrato on the bends, mostly. But you can emulate that effect with bend vibrato. And that's a very important technique that I'd like to talk about here. And for this part, I used a pretty saturated high gain tone to get that hang time. You know, it's something you want to get a lot of sustain so you don't feel like you have to try to get your shakes in before the note dies out. So you would get a nice big even vibrato. So let me go over a couple parts here.
So the lead guitar enters in bar five. I'm doing what I call a mute rake bend and shake. Kind of rhymes, right? Like a cheer. You're dragging the pick across the strings. You know, just lightly muting it with the index finger. And then here's your fretted note, A. And then you're reinforcing it one fret lower with the middle finger at the ninth fret. Getting the thumb there for, that's kind of a standard technique for bending. You know, use the ring finger supported by the middle finger one fret lower, and then with the thumb kind of hooking around. And then a little bit of palm muting. Now that bend vibrato technique, that really is the key. So you have your target pitch, you're going from A to B. You slightly release it, only by like a quarter tone. You don't go, that sounds too wide, right? Too, you know, out of control. And then in bar seven, we do a one and a half step in. Bend it up to, so you always want to look at your target note. If it's a whole step bend, it's the same as the unbent note, two frets higher. Half step bend, one fret higher. One and a half steps would be three frets higher. So you can go. You really got to use your ears, you know, train your ears and your fingers to work together to apply just the right amount of push pressure to get that bend. So I did a, Bend, release, pull off, hammer on, rebend. Another bend vibrato, and then. Uh, that's in bars eight and nine. Bend at the eighth fret. I'm shaking it with the fret hand. I'm not trying to get the vibrato with the index finger. That wouldn't work too well. So then when you pull off from the tap, this finger pulls off simultaneously and it, it's caught by the middle finger, right? Think of it as catching like a, a catcher or a trapeze catching someone. <laughs> and I do this move right after I play. Uh, those are harp harmonics. Fret it at the third fret, and then you lightly touch it exactly 12 frets higher. You go, you touch it with the tip of the index finger directly over the 15th fret. You get those artificial harmonics one octave higher, and then see what I did? I tucked my pick into my palm temporarily so I could use my thumb to pick the notes. So I went. And then I tuck the pick into the palm. And then get the pick again. All ready for the next bend. Bar 13, we have another one and a half step bend. We're playing. It's your classic, like, Albert King lick. Hopefully Beethoven doesn't mind me <laughs> adding that little inflection. We have a similar move uh, with the bend, vibrato, release, pull off, Albert King lick on bar 22 we go. That's almost like a hammer on from nowhere. I get the vibrato there, it's a little different. Actually, okay, I'm pushing there. Yeah, you, I mean, you could pull. If you're on the bottom string, you'd have to pull. So all the bends pretty much follow that same MO. Use the ring finger, support it one fret lower by the middle finger. Give it the shake by releasing it only about a quarter step. And try to relax, try to keep it even and, you know, not, not too uh, fast and shaky. And then at the very end, you have this hauntingly Beautiful. That's in bar 61. You repeat that move a few times. Very careful intonation here. You know, no vibrato, just 
Bending from B flat to B. And you're a free bend. And then we come down to home stretch here in bar 65. We do the same thing, D sharp to E. there before the bend. And I did a little production thing there. I kind of just made it wetter and wetter with the reverb so it, it kind of fades into the background and it sounds kind of cool. So that's it. My new and improved arrangement of Moonlight Sonata. I hope you like it. The full tabs appear in the October 2023 issue of Guitar World. This is Jimmy Brown. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.